Death is an extremely flexible narrative concept in television. Everybody loves a comeback, and as such, it's never wise to write a character off as dead and buried until you see a body. Perhaps not even then. If executed poorly, character resurrections can come across as cheesy or lazily written, to the point that such a development takes away from the prestige of the show itself. But not every resurrection is bad. Some are handled with great care and skill, and the results can be as satisfying as anything you'll see in their respective shows. With that in mind, I'm Adam from What Culture, and here are 10 best times TV characters returned from the dead. Number 10. Drake Ramore, Friends. Legendary neurosurgeon Drake Ramore was taken from us too soon. In a tragically ironic twist of fate, the only doctor who could save the medical genius from his appalling injuries was himself. Anybody who has ever witnessed an episode of Friends will know that we're referring to the ridiculous return of one of Days of Our Lives' most famous alums. Ramore originally departed the land of the living after Joey claimed credit for the character's lines, so the irritated writers proceeded to throw him down an elevator shaft to teach him some humility. Armed with a new brain, Ramore stages a triumphant comeback following a cerebral transplant, with his new brain belonging to departed cast member Jessica Lockhart's character. The seventh season of Friends sees Joey having to learn the actress's mannerisms in order to authentically bring this bizarre amalgamation of characters to life, with predictably hilarious results. Joey's role as Drake was one of Friends' longest running and most beloved gags. Accordingly, the reintroduction to the deceased Doctor is one of the more chuckle-worthy moments of the show's latter seasons. Number 9. Tulip O'Hare, Preacher Ruth Negger's effortlessly charismatic take on legendary comic character Tulip O'Hare was one of Preacher's most prized assets. It was therefore unsurprising that Preacher chose to resurrect O'Hare soon after her death at the hands of undercover Grail operative Featherstone. The shocking loss of Tulip represented a jaw-dropping cliffhanger, but the indispensable nature of Negger's character and the boundless limits of Preacher's supernatural universe meant that fans were quietly confident of her revival. After a brief but nightmarish stint in purgatory, Jesse eventually manages to restore Tulip to life with the help of a witch, who just so happens to be his magnetically chilling grandma. Tulip's return to the land of the living may not have come as a shock to fans of the original comic, but it remained a thunderous way to kick off the third outing for AMC's outrageous show. O'Hare's demise in the second season finale also had the benefit of providing a key flashpoint in Jesse and Cassidy's feud. Jesse's refusal to let Cassidy turn Tulip into a vampire to save her life appeared to spell the end for any semblance of a relationship between two of the show's focal characters. Number 8. Barbara Keane, Gotham Bringing the origins of Gotham's infamous rogue gallery to life resulted in what was at times an overwhelming influx of supervillains on Fox's Batman spin-off show. The good news on that front is that these villains often dwarf the charisma and likability exhibited by Gotham's central heroes. Ben McKenzie's Jim Gordon does a great brooding stare, but struggles with anything of dramatic substance. Elsewhere, David Mazou's laughably rigid take on an adolescent Bruce Wayne, don't call him the B-word unless you fancy a lawsuit, imbues the legendary crime fighter with the charisma of an avocado, and considerably less likability. Accordingly then, Gotham decided to bring one of its more colourful villains back from the dead. Jim Gordon's one-time fiancé Barbara Keane appeared to be literal toast following the events of the third season finale, following her death by electrocution at the hands of Tabitha, retribution for the former's murder of Butch. Thankfully, Miss Keane is resurrected by Ra's al Ghul using the Lazarus Pit, setting the ridiculous, yet thoroughly entertaining Demon's Head storyline in motion. Gotham having one of its most compelling cast members back didn't hurt either. Number 7. Jim Hopper, Stranger Things Leading up to the release of Volume 4, Stranger Things' worst kept secret was the fate of Jim Hopper. David Hopper's beloved chief of police was seemingly blown to kingdom come in Volume 3's finale, sacrificing himself in a cataclysmic explosion to close the Russians' portal to the Upside Down. However, the Duffer brothers were hardly tight-lipped regarding Hopper's apparent demise. A post credit scene made reference to an American being held prisoner in a Russian facility. Wonder who that could possibly be? Fans switched Swiftly began speculating how Hopper could have possibly survived the blast, let alone how he ended up in Russia. The explanation was maddeningly simple. The classic get out of jail free narrative device of he jumped away at the last second. Hopper was simply blasted clear of the explosion by the shockwave and was found by Russian soldiers sifting through the debris. Do better, Duffer brothers. The strength of Hopper's return derives entirely from David Harbour's performance, as opposed to the intricacies concerning his survival. One of the most popular television characters of all time, Hopper's purported 
reported loss highlighted the extent of the devastating narrative hole his character's death would leave. His tear-jerking reunion with Eleven is exactly the uplifting moment audiences need following Vecna's relentless campaign of evil across Volume 4. Number 6. Elizabeth Keene, The Blacklist Long-running thriller The Blacklist is one of television's most compelling crime dramas. The magnetic James Spader crackles in the lead role of Raymond Red Reddington, a criminal mastermind who volunteers his services to the FBI in catching the elusive members of the titular Blacklist. Reddington's only request is immunity from prosecution, and working with a supposedly unconnected profiler named Elizabeth Keene, later revealed to be his daughter. Keene, played in a masterful turn by Megan Boone, seemingly perishes due to complications arising from childbirth in the show's third season. Fortunately for the hordes of grieving fans, what seemed like a tragically premature end was unveiled as The Blacklist's latest case study in deception. The third season finale reveals that Elizabeth faked her death by placing herself in a medically induced coma with the help of Kate Kaplan, taking a leaf out of Reddington's book in a desperate attempt to avoid the tentrals of his influence. This twist had ramifications for The Blacklist that are still being felt to this day. Keane was eventually killed in the eighth season finale just as she seemed primed to take over Reddington's empire. However, due to her previous rise from the dead, fans justifiably remain sceptical that this beloved show staple is truly gone. Number 5. Arthur Shelby, Peaky Blinders Peaky Blinders' fourth season was the show's darkest outing to date. Audiences got a terrifying taste of what they were in for as series mainstay John Shelby was ruthlessly gunned down by mafioso hitmen outside of his own home. The message that Stephen Knight and co were clearly trying to send? Nobody is safe. This morbid status quo appeared to have claimed its latest victim in the season finale, as eldest Shelby brother Arthur apparently met a gruesome end at the hands and piano wire of Luca Changretta's assassins. Tommy immediately surrenders to protect the remainder of his family, or so it appears. In a magnificent twist, Tommy reveals he has allied himself with Changretta's business rivals across the pond. Those men now work for him. Tommy delivers a brutal beatdown to the Italian, leaving audiences practically pounding their fists with glee. This is all before the image of Arthur even comes into focus, his purported death unmasked as a stunning allusion to lure Changretta to the table. Luca barely has time to blink before Arthur executes him with a single shot to the head, avenging John in one of Peaky Blinders' most immortal sequences. Number 4. Kara Thrace, Battlestar Galactica Katie Sackhoff's Kara Thrace was one of Battlestar Galactica's most celebrated characters. The fighter ace purportedly perishes in devastating circumstances when a viper mysteriously explodes following a dogfight with Cyclone battleships in the midst of a solar storm. However, Starbuck isn't done with audiences just yet. The beloved pilot reappears to Apollo in an unblemished ship, totally unaware of her demise. Thrace claims to have been to Earth and eventually guides the fleet there, despite their initial reservations concerning her impossible reappearance. Adding a further layer of mystique to proceedings, Starbuck disappears soon after accomplishing her mission, begging the question as to whether this is a legitimate resurrection or a message from the beyond. Battlestar Galactica always handles its religious elements with flawless aplomb, and Thrace's brief revival stands as one of the show's most celebrated examples of this. Number 3. Brian Griffin, Family Guy The levels of vitriol from Family Guy's detractors are only matched by the passionate levels of defense from the legendary cartoon's diehard fanbase. However, even the show's most stone-faced critics couldn't help but allow a little ray of emotion to penetrate their icy exteriors when the Griffin's dog Brian passed away in a devastating fashion after being hit by a car. The scene in which the teary family bid their loyal hound farewell is one of the more moving sequences in adult cartoon history. The impact of Brian's loss, sharply juxtaposed with Family Guy's usual crude humour, results in one of the most emotionally charged scenes in recent memory. Seth MacFarlane did a phenomenal job in maintaining the ruse for so long, giving interviews concerning the impact of Brian's demise, and even casting Tony Sirico as the Griffin's new dog, Vinny. The show legitimately appeared to be moving on without Brian, a stunning development considering the character's storied history and popularity. Ultimately, the sense of authenticity surrounding Brian's loss proved to be a stroke of genius, serving only to ramp up the feel-good factor when he made his triumphant homecoming. With Vinny's help, Stewie used his restored time machine to save his best friend, precipitating the uplifting comeback of America's favourite alcoholic canine. Number 2. Sherlock, Sherlock The BBC Sherlock is a brilliantly frustrating case study in on-screen resurrection. While the detective's death only lasts for a matter of minutes, with Sherlock's survival being revealed in the final shots of the Reichenbach fall, 
the two years between the second and third seasons were rife with desperately far-fetched theories as to how he denied the Reaper. Framed as a fraud by Moriarty, Sherlock was posed with an impossible choice in the second season finale. The detective must hurl himself from the roof of St. Bartholomew's Hospital, or his tormentor will have every person that Sherlock holds dear murdered, with assassins standing by. Sherlock's emotionally loaded farewell to John seconds before his jump lent an air of mournful authenticity to proceedings. As paramedics scraped Holmes's bloody remains off the pavement, viewers were left with one question. How the hell does one survive a multi-story swan dive onto concrete? Ultimately, Sherlock is maddeningly vague concerning the answer that fans were dying to find out. The following episode depicts a number of increasingly fantastical theories, later shown to be the musings of a guilt-stricken Philip Anderson following Sherlock's perceived suicide. While Sherlock eventually confides what he claims to be the unbelievable truth behind his survival to Anderson himself, the tongue-in-cheek manner of his revelation means that audiences are ultimately left questioning the legitimacy of his explanation. Number 1. Jon Snow, Game of Thrones Everybody knew nothing, but everybody knew. Game of Thrones, notorious for killing fan favourites in shocking fashion, had seemingly bumped off one of its most beloved protagonists, Jon Snow. The Bastard of Winterfell met a Julius Caesar-esque end in the fifth season finale, murdered in cold blood by mutinous Night's Watch members. This stunning development broke the pop culture world overnight. Poor Jon had barely finished bleeding out before the wildfire of fan theories took light, influencing everyday discussion like nothing seen on a television show before. Additionally, intrigue surrounding the destiny of Kit Harrington's character was ramped up by George R. R. Martin's own musings on John's fate. Mirroring the show, John is killed by mutineers in Martin's fifth book, A Dance with Dragons. Fans assumed the worst for the Lord Commander until Martin, quizzed by a fan regarding the demise of one of his central characters, set the internet conspiracy forums ablaze once again with a simple sentence. Oh, you think he's dead, do you? As such, fans knew that John would be returning long before set photos leaked online, depicting a certain top-knotted individual in stark armour. A little Melisandre magic in season 6's early goings, and Jon swiftly makes his glorious comeback to the land of the living. Regrettably, considering the show's cataclysmic drop in quality soon after, he would have been better off staying dead. But what did you think of our list there? Please let us know in the comments, and let us know the name of the character you enjoyed returning from the dead the most in your favourite TV show. If you want to follow me on socials, I am at strawn87 on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you for watching everybody, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, take care.